Right, so this is the showcase video of the DIT iPad case that I built in the last video. If you haven't seen that video, you know, maybe check it out. There's a lot of interesting stuff in there in terms of why I built this thing and yeah, the design philosophy behind it. In this video, I will mainly be focusing on, you know, how stable is it? What do I use it for? And maybe somebody can learn something from the things that I'm doing with this thing. So at the back here, we have CF Express Type B card reader. These are the cards that I usually shoot on. They're uh, 512 gig. You can just plug that in right there. And what happens is, go open the files over here and it shows up there right away. And this is really handy for pre-checking footage. So if I do this on my Windows computer, then it takes like forever to, to load, like 10 seconds to even play the footage. And here I can just check, check like, okay, is there anything wrong with the camera? But also, my Windows computer is just very slow in loading in footage. So I have an SSD caddy right over here. And you can slide in an SSD and it lands on a USB-C port right over there. And that also shows up. Let me check if this is the correct one. We can work with this. Let's just make a new folder. Test pull. <laughs> and that's how we want to Transfer, uh, transfer some footage. So I'll okay, hit select over there. These are, you know, stack the move, and then we can go to this test folder and copy these files. And then up in the top there, you'll see a little oops, progress bar. So I'm doing uh, 25 gigs at the moment, and it's taking, it says it's going to take one minute and seven seconds. We'll actually continue with this test later on in the video where I also show like transferring a lot more files. During that transfer, also switching to different different applications and plugging in HDMI and that kind of stuff. But first we'll move on to some different workflows that I have for this thing. So something I'm very excited for with this is actually optimizing my thumbnail creation process. So I'm, I, I think there were some comments on my TikTok account like, oh, you know, it's faster than your PC, you must have a really crappy PC and to some, you know it's somewhat older hardware I'm using a AMD RX uh, 7900 XTX with a with 32 gigabytes of RAM clocked in at 3600 and a Ryzen 9 5900X 12 core processor so not the newest hardware but it is a decent computer let's say the thing I'm running into is for example with Lightroom that if you apply noise reduction it just takes forever and just importing footage takes forever and as you can see i did make the thumbnail for for that for the uh, instagram reel but let's say i want to apply noise reduction in on this picture as you can see it's quite noisy and noise reduction right over here pull that slider it immediately just does it there is no waiting there is no no loading bar, whatever. Like when I do this on my Windows computer, I don't understand what the difference is. Maybe it's a very different process or something, and I'm just stupid in this regard. But that is incredibly fast. And what we can also do is open it in Photoshop, for example. So you have a little button up there, and then you say Edit in Photoshop. It's exported there. It, it's opened Photoshop straight away, and it's imported it. So it's taken a little while, but it is quite a lot faster as well. And this is Photoshop and something I oftentimes do is using the generative fill to expand the image, so to say. So let's say I want to expand it this way and then you click the generative fill. I leave that empty so that it just does whatever it wants and then expands the image. Now I didn't crop it properly over, the, over there so it's probably going to do something funky but that's a very useful tool to have. That's that trick that they do. People are so impatient that they make the loading bar go faster in the beginning and towards the end they kind of taper it off you know so that you don't um, get impatient you're like oh i'm invested now in psychology tricks it had a little it had a tough time with this one usually it's way faster and as you can see it represents my floor pretty well a bunch of glitching objects over there so this is pretty cool uh, i can imagine i'll be using this quite a lot for creating the thumbnails on this channel. Uh, as I shoot with the Fuji X-H2S, there's quite a lot of noise in this in these pictures 
oftentimes, and it's very nice to add that noise reduction. Uh, what is this? Yeah, that's another thing with the iPad. I'm just not very good at it. Like, you know, if you want to truly use this to its full potential, you need to learn kind of how to do all the gestures and that kind of stuff. And a lot of the times when I come up with an idea, I just want to quickly write it down. But it's so inconsistent into, in regards to when the keyboard pops up. Like I want to type something and then it's like the keyboard doesn't pop and I'm like, what's happening? I close the app, do the exact same thing again. And for some reason then it works. Like what is going on? <laughs> so it would be really cool if we had a, a keyboard that would not uh, fold out, but actually slide out. Like a little, just like a, a draw mechanism. You just push it and it goes. That would be really awesome. So that you can ha one hand it and just type away. And of course we have that folio case thing, but be cool if we, we like built something ourselves. I keep forgetting to film these segments, so we've just filmed the video, but if you're interested in seeing more build projects, just consider subscribing if you're new here or if you, you haven't seen the other video about how I build this thing, maybe check that one out. But currently I'm building something really awesome and um, I printed this again in resin with PCBWay. That was also a comment in the previous video, what did I print this in? So I used the resin print service from PCBWay uh, in UTR black. Now I'm not entirely sure how that works. I think they spray paint it, sand it down and spray paint it, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm not familiar with their process in that regard. I know how resin printing looks like for us, but for the larger, like they have access to printers that I don't even understand, you know? The, the machines there are probably really awesome. I wish I had one. <laughs> All right, so maybe I should have showed that it actually loaded in the footage, but I'll just uh, put on another transfer, so and then we can check in a moment so that you can actually see like how stable this thing is. Because so far I haven't actually had any issues with it in that regard, so, which is really quite cool. But I, before I actually take this onto location, I have like a piece of tape stuck to my smeg off. Um, before I actually take this onto location, I will like really check it right. I don't want to like, do, uh, like have like 30,000 in damages because I messed up some shoot or something. That would be really a shame. Uh, but let's just transfer these. I think some of them are already over here. So the operation can't be completed. There's not enough free sp Oh, sorry about this. That was not planned by the way, but you can see how. So initially I wanted to have multiple of these SSD caddies on there, right? But you'll see in the uh, build video that it it became unstable and so that's why there's only one SSD and one thingamajig which kind of transfers into uh, another issue that this thing has which is battery life so the battery is okay but you can see like we were at 40% just a moment ago and we, uh, like 15 minutes has passed and it's already at 26% so it does eat through battery quite quickly now that's mostly due to the hardware that's connected to it, right? So, uh, you know, the SSDs, they take quite a lot of power. The CF Express Type B card reader takes a lot of power. But most of all, four minutes for 40 gigabytes, that's pretty cool. But most of all, the hubs also take a lot of power. So, can I just turn this off as a test? <laughs> the, the Bazoos hub that I put in this thing uh, just sucks, like, stuff I, I don't know what's up with it but it has been quite nice like the what you might call it HDMI port works on this thing I did uh, prep this for this video a little bit including the lighting was for a different video by the way so it's very very poor I'm making a uh, pretty cool edit pad thing so get subscribed if you're interested in those kinds of things like I build stuff essentially but as you can see the screen works and I don't know what people would use this for, but I thought it'd be handy to also showcase like, hey, you can add ports to this thing and it is quite, yeah, functional. I used the one at the top for like a little USB stick as well. If I'm transferring a short that I've produced for TikTok, for example, I put a little USB stick in there. So let's load in some, uh, some footage from the SSD. This is 6.2K. ProRes footage, I believe. So, oh no, it's uh, 265. 
when you load it in, this is really impressive. Like you just throw it in the timeline and you can just immediately scroll through it like that. Sorry for the sound. This is really impressive. If I try this on my Windows computer, I'm pretty sure it's going to explode. Now the only downside to this is you can't actually put and like make proxies on the iPad yet. But DaVinci Resolve is really pushing this quite hard. You have the color grading tab here as well. And you can actually get access to the full tabs when you connect the keyboard to this. And it's kind of a hack to where you can actually open the edit page as well and that kind of stuff. And let's see if the transfer is finished yet. So yeah, it seems to have transferred all the footage, which is pretty awesome. Like as you can see there, I, I did a lot of things in the meantime, right? I, I went into different applications and it still did its job, which is really quite nice. That's mostly due to like the port is, is not being interfered with. So if you have an SSD connected to this thing, usually what happen, what makes it fail is that you're moving about and then the port kind of wiggles and maybe it loses power, that kind of stuff. And that's what makes it all sketchy. So another downside with this design is, of course, the iPad is not very ergonomic. If I, if I work on this thing for yeah, 15 minutes, I have a sore back. Like that's really, uh, and I think that's why uh, Apple is also trying to make these things like thinner and thinner and lighter and lighter each year. So that you can actually hold it in the proper position to where you're not looking down on it. And in that regard, this thing is really quite heavy. Like it's a, it's a hefty, chunky thing. But I'm really happy that we added this Arc Swiss plate because what I'm doing right now is I'm actually connecting this to a tripod and it looks really strange <laughs> and you might think like, okay, isn't that really annoying with the pencil, but it's actually really nice. Just have this thing quite like, close on front of you and you're just doing uh, stuff on it. Now, that presents its own issue, so to say, because in, in terms of eye health, it's not very really nice to have this thing so close to your, to your face, right? Why does everything always disappear in this place? Like I'm looking for the Peak Design Capture Clip thing which I had yesterday and it's just... Oh, here it is. Okay, cool. It's just my eyes. Like, things can be right on front of me and I just won't see them. I don't understand how that's even... Like, I have decent eyesight. I mean, I have glasses, but uh, the... they're very minor. It's just that my brain doesn't compute it or something. I don't know what's up with that. We have the Peak Design Capture Clip here as well. And I didn't properly showcase this, but I have it connected to like a, a band, like a, what do you call this? Uh, whatever. And you just clip it on and then it's stuck. Which is really nice for on location work when you're dialing in lights and that kind of stuff. So let me just quickly connect it to power. And you can also immediately see, like with some of the other hubs, it took quite a long while before it started pulling like full maximum power. But as you can see right now, it's going straight up to 30, 30 watts. 30 watts is what the iPad takes, and it, it jumped up to 36 there just a moment ago. But that's pretty awesome. It, uh, now some of the other ones had some kind of protection in place where it didn't charge at full speed. And this one works quite nicely. And while it's charging, you can still use the thing. The only thing that I did run into during testing is when I took out this, this charger, then the hubs would disconnect, but it doesn't seem to be happening anymore. Let me see if I can trick this. Like when I'm playing footage and then just, All right, it seems to be working right now. But that is something I, I ran into, which is why I'm very careful with like, okay, you know, I'm going to thoroughly test it before I actually use it in a real world scenario, other than YouTube, of course. I mean, my YouTube footage, I mean, stuff like this, I can't really film again, but it's not that big of a deal if it like corrupts this file, for example. Then we get a um, Ethernet connection so I can showcase the Ethernet port working. So I was just thinking actually, maybe I'll do an update video in like a couple of weeks, which is actually like properly edited and, and filmed. Like <laughs> this is very quickly uh, done, but it gives you a good sense for how it works. So we connect the ethernet port right over there. Little lights are starting to blink. So I think that's a good sign. 
and I'm, I'm not sure what you would use this for. Maybe you're, like I wrote down why I wanted an Ethernet port, but it was kind of jokingly like, um, when you're too shy to ask for the Wi-Fi code in an office building, <laughs> and you can connect to the, because they usually have like Ethernet ports in the, on the, on the walls and that kind of stuff. Can we actually see if it's doing anything? Usually a little pop-up comes up, which illustrates, oh yeah, it says here Ethernet. So I think that's really the main issue, that, the reason that this is so useful for me is Apple has this really great dream of like, okay, cloud-based everything, right? And that's great and all, but like here in the Netherlands and also if you live in Germany, for example, these are the speeds that you're often working with. Especially in my apartment building, I only have D DSL. So that's that copper cable, so to say. So this is the maximum speed that I achieve. And usually, uh, like I wake up very early in the morning, like at four o'clock, and uh, then, then it just, it achieves like seven MBs per second. So <laughs> I'm not sure why that is. Maybe they think I'm st still sleeping or something. But uh, it would be really cool if we could connect this to like a NAS or something. I'm not sure if that's possible, but then to backup footage. That is a very big issue that I'm running into with the YouTube process at the moment. I am very quickly running out of hardware, uh, uh, hard drive space. Uh, I have two terabytes, you know, two of these two terabyte SSDs, and it's not enough because I'm doing multiple projects at, at once. And so I'm backing up files to these very slow, uh, hard drives and uh, yeah, it's bogging down the process quite a lot. So something else I concepted in the beginning was adding a capture card to this thing. So this is this company called Axoon and they do make this capture card integration for like uh, mobile devices, which is pretty awesome. But I didn't have the cash flow to actually make that happen. Actually, they have a really awesome case. Look at this. That's awesome. So yeah, you can see it right over there and has an MPF battery mount, which would also be quite useful for this one, so that you can actually swap out the battery. Because if it's integrated into the device, then you'd have to charge it through the port, and then you'd still have an external uh, battery to, to charge this thing. And sure, it will, will last longer, but it's way better if you can just like pop it out, pop a new one in. So I mean, that's, for a future version, that's pretty cool. So I think that was somewhat it for the showcase. If you had something like that you're curious about that you don't know yet how I use it or whatever, just leave a comment down below. I read literally every single comment, even on the videos that perform very, very well. So yeah, let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.